two of them had already done. What's up, guys? Welcome to Live at Five. Um, we're going to go over a couple little uh, exercises you guys can do at home, some simple pieces of equipment. Uh, we also have you at the lab. So I'm just going to show you guys some things you can do. I'll do Bosu ball and the ab ball as well, medicine ball. The uh, three pound dumbbells and the five pound. Okay. Uh, so to start off, just to get warmed up, start off regular jumping jacks with the three pound. If you guys are doing these, go for like 30 seconds, 30 seconds or so. I'm just gonna go 15. Once you guys do it here, you can switch and go upright this way. Like Jacob's ladder, like you're climbing a, a ladder. I use the punches. You're gonna go opposite, opposite hand, opposite knee, like you're making an X. And then also you're gonna punch upright, same thing, opposite arm, opposite knee. So again, guys, try to do each exercise for like 30 seconds. I'm just going for 15. That's like a good little warm up or uh, in between before you grab water or whatever. Try to do that one before you grab so you're not just pounding all that water and jumping around. That's a good warm up. Grab a three pound. Dumbbells do that. Should be about two minutes of work. Then we're going to grab the five pounders. You don't need too much weight when you guys are building the shoulders, especially for, for muscle conditioning for punching. Um, you need your arms conditioned to have your hands up for anywhere from, you know, three, three minute rounds to, you know, five, five minute rounds. So the muscle conditioning, you're going to need higher reps. You're going to tear the muscle a lot more when you lose, uh, use lighter weight and higher reps. You know what I mean? Like tear the muscle more because you're moving more weight essentially. You know, like what's more, uh, what's more physical labor? You know, picking up, uh, trying to move a rock that weighs, you know, 200 pounds and just picking up from A and setting it down to B. Or picking up a rock that weighs 25 pounds and picking it up, moving back, you know, 20 times A to B. You mean? You're going to move more weight with the smaller, the smaller rocks so and you're tearing the muscle more. Um, so a good little shoulder conditioning draw I do with the five pounders. We'll start um, rotating the thumbs in. And then you go thumbs down and then pinkies up. Or we're going this way. Okay. So essentially I'm keeping like my palms here. And then we're going to flip to our palms are, 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 are over. And we're going up this way. But right now the palms are back. Back top of your hand going down. And we're going here and then up. All right. And once we switch, we're going to go out this way and then up here. Okay. And the first set. I want you guys to do a couple. You guys can swing if you want to build momentum. Just keep those thumbs down when you come up. Your hand's going to want to turn and go like this. Just kind of keep that thumb down. But you guys can keep that, that turn in your rotator cuff. And uh, Try to go for like eight. Eight is a good number for each set that we can get through all of them. And then switch and go upright, so palms out. Right? Just kind of like try to go halfway down, shoulder height, and back up. If you get tired or need the momentum, you guys can come down and use that as a little pick me up to get up, right? As you can, try to come down to sh shoulder height and back up. Again for eight. And then here we go normal flies, so now our palms are down. So, and we're gonna do bent over flies, so same thing, we'll go for eight down, and back up, big wide chest. Uh, get fatigued just doing all these all these reps with uh, just these light weights. So we've done a bunch of different exercises. All right, the next one will go palms down, and go shoulders out, or uh, waist out in front, shoulder height, and just back this way. Eight, so that was the palms down. Now we're going to flip the palms in. So same exact motion, uh, weights or shoulder heights. 
And now the palms are in facing themselves. They go out this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good job. Okay, so now these last two are going to punch straight up. So you're going to step forward your left leg in front. Okay, palms facing in this way. And you're going to twist and rotate all the way up as you come up. It's one, two. So two, two arm extensions is one count. Four, five, six, seven, eight. With your stance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's like a good circuit with the little five pound dumbbells. If you guys want, you guys can start high and then pyramid down. So I'm like just uh, gonna strain train and not hit the bag and not do any pad work or anything after. Um, I'll start a little bit higher. I'll, I'll maybe I'll maybe do the first set at like 12, 12 pounds, and then and then go down from 12. I'll go to 10 and do my next uh, my, my next circuit at 10. I'm gonna do a bunch of other stuff, superset core or whatever. My shoulders rest. Come back the third time, drop down from 10 to 8. So I want 12, 10, 8. Anyway, so I'm still able to keep higher reps, just dropping the weight a little bit. You know what I mean? I then finish with the with the five pounds usually. So that's like a good, those are good weights to stick for shoulders, especially for for the you know 135, 145, 145, 155 weight class. Um, once you guys do the warm-up, the conditioning drill, we'll go over some punching combos with the little weights. So now we've got these three pounders. Okay, so real simple, just to get, get the body moving. Um, we're gonna go just a jab cross hook. So the jab, we're gonna turn your heel up a little bit, extend your hip, and then fire that cross, and turn your head across that lead leg on the ball of my foot, and then fire that hook. I'm gonna turn my hip, my foot, my shoulder, make sure my elbow's up, all four of those turn this way. So jab, cross, hook. That's a good frame, good form for your body. To hold yourself accountable. Remember, we gotta get used to punching while we can stand still before we can start punching um, objects that move and sparring partners that move around. All right, so let me just uh, rattle off 20 of, 20 of these with the weights. And make sure when you guys shadow box, you're doing these drills. It's all about form. It's all about technique. Um, and when you get in front of a heavy bag, then we're worrying about power, trying to get back. When you guys are out in the open, especially in front of a mirror, try to make you hold yourself accountable. Don't even throw a jab if you're up like this. Don't even throw a cross if it's going to come like this. You know what I mean? And then a the hook, we're turning like, try to be accurate with everything. Boom. Oh, you should be able to stop on a dime at every, every position of the punch. Right? So, for long, complete movements. And off that hook here, we'll slip, slip, and then add an uppercut hook. Okay, so it's a jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, uppercut hook. Jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, uppercut hook. Jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, uppercut hook. Jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, <laughs> uppercut hook. If you guys want to do that jab, cross, hook, slip, roll, you guys can do that as well. Right, slip, roll. The only difference between a slip and a roll is you bend your knees. Right, so instead of my body just coming back this way on a slip, watch when I bend my knees, my head kind of drops down, makes like a view. I drop down over here, I pop up over here. I'm just kind of bending my knees. I don't bend my knees, just a normal slip. I'm still just kind of turning my shoulders side to side. You know what I mean? Same thing, jab, cross, hook, slip, roll, uppercut, hook, jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, up, hook, jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, up, hook, we can add a knee, jab, cross, hook, slip, slip, up, hook, knee. You can even change the punches up if you want. You can go jab, uppercut, hook, slip, slip, cross, hook to a knee. Okay. 
And again, 20 times or so with the weights. And then I'm set the weights down. I rattle right off that same combination, a little bit better form. So no weights will go jump off the hooks and slip. Change up the punches a little bit. Jab, uppercut, hook, slip, slip, cross, hook. Let me do that like uh, 10 times with no weight. You know, 20 times with the weight, 10 times no weight, or 15 and 15. You know, so you're seeing the, the feel and the difference of the reps when you have weight in your hands and not. You know, and then we'll go uh, here with this leg drill. You guys have a little shoe ball at home. Kind of wake the nervous system up or she go regular squats on the ball. Um, again, you guys are doing this, you're gonna like shake when you do it. Uh, that's all your small muscles trying to stabilize, right? And all your small muscle fibers trying to figure out what all your body weight is doing and try to stabilize and balance it. So this is a great way. This is like way more athletic of a squat than just uh say a power lifter or something. You know what I mean? These are, I think, these kind on here, even just regular squats with no body, with no weight, just your body weight, you know what I mean? But tons and tons of reps, just build that conditioning for your legs, that fight conditioning, the muscle conditioning, that endurance conditioning that we need for these combat sports. Um, just kind of be careful getting off and on these things. Uh, the first regular run we're gonna do is a regular squat. Kind of just get your feet on. I like putting my feet at the handles, toes straight ahead, and just sit your butt back and kind of extend your arms out in front of you as like the counter, the counterweight, right? Just go down this way. Go ten. Uh, the last one we'll just go down and hold. Okay, so we'll squat down, and just hold. Now, you know, a partner you can do this with both guys can go, and you can throw the medicine ball back and forth. And the medicine ball will kind of knock you off balance, knock you off base. I'm gonna have to stabilize your base and balance. You don't only have to use a heavy ball when doing that. And again, just try to hold here for like 30 seconds or so. Legs are shaking and moving, trying to hold for five, four. See that? I'm not really trying to do that, like consciously. It's kind of my legs are just kind of moving. There. Good job. You feel that burn on that one too, you guys. So again, you get like high endurance muscle condition without doing like a lot of big elaborate movements. You know what I mean? Very small space. This is all stuff you guys can have at home. And uh, but there's a bunch of drills you can do. So we'll come back to this one. So we'll do an ab drill next. This is good for like uh, strengthening your legs in your, in your guard. We do a crunch, sit it back down, and then grab the ball right up. So every other one, you're gonna sit up no ball, and then grab. So when the ball is in my hands, the weight's in my upper body, when I pinch with my legs, I'm using my hips. So I'm gonna do two leg pumps, right, with every, with the ball, two leg pumps, 
Hold out the wall. And that'll be like one circuit, right? Or one round. We kind of just hit every station. So um, if you guys want to, uh, I don't know, pause that or just write that down for like the first uh, uh, circuit and then just increase the time on all those. And then I'm trying to do a little bit faster session so I can get more info to you guys. But uh, again, try to do those warm ups with the jumping jacks. And then we did Jake's ladder. And the high knee is punching straight out. The high knee is punching straight up. Um, again, 30 seconds each. You know what I mean? And then um, uh, at the end, do the reps, punches with the go right from the, the warm ups to the, 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 the flies, the shoulder conditioning, and then drop right from that to the punching. Go once the pyramid down, doing the shoulder drills, doing the punching drills with the weights, and then doing the combos without the weights, all kind of in, in sequence. Right? And then we'll take a break, let the shoulders rest, and then we'll do the legs and the core. So, uh, We'll go back over to the. We'll grab a quick sip of uh, iced tea really quick. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so we'll go, uh, we'll do that second set. Again, so now back to that first drill, right? Uh, palms down, top of your hound out. We're gonna come halfway up. And again, I'm just going to eight. If you guys want to change that and go more, you guys can't, you guys can. You can do 12 reps of each, that's a good number, good goal. And palms down. This is And then we'll go uh, palms down, legs up, weights on front, and you go all the way back. Good job. And we're going to go palms in, same movement. Uh, and then we're going to go uh, punching straight up. Actually, we'll add, you know that Jacob's ladder again, uh, standing still, right? This way, or you can call them eight fingers, just all the way up, all the way down. Again, this is kind of the full range of motion is to, it's helping you with momentum, but uh, ideally you'd have it straight out, shoulder height, which come up and down and alternate like here. So the starting point is shoulder height with the weights, and then come straight up. <laughs> And again, right now, my palms are facing out, and I'm going to do my set of eight, and then my palms are going to come in. Let's say movement. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so uh, add that one into the end of the cycle. I forgot to add that, that first one. And now we're going to finish with just punching upright, right? So left leg in front, our orthodox stance. Palms stay in. Don't just go arms out like here, but how the palms facing your, your face. And then when you punch, you're going to rotate them all the way over and extend the palm out, right? So one, two, three. Again, two punches is one count. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to switch my stance, a southpaw stance. Palms in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. 
And again, these are good exercises you guys can do in between bag work as well. You got bags at home, gloves, you know, work a couple of rounds in that bag. Maybe do like three, three minute rounds of bag work, you know, or, or three, five minute rounds. And uh, pick up the gloves, do a set of weights, take a little water break and back on. And you, or even add jump rope into that mix. So you know, crack and work in the bag, jump off, hit a cycle here, and then back from the jump rope for recovery. Boom. And that could be one minute, one round, if you want to. If you're trying to gear your body for MMA rounds, maybe do the three three minutes of bag work, and then one minute of, of the weights, and then one minute jump rope, and that'll be equivalent to five minutes. You know, and kind of build your cardio that way. Um, we'll, we'll jump on the three pounders now. Go back to those combinations. Okay, so last time we went jab, uh, cross, hook. Um, so this one will go. We'll slip to the other side. Okay, so we'll, we'll slip off the right hand. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna slip to the side first. I'll go jab and kind of create a response out of, out of, uh, out of the opponent. We'll go jab, he fires back, and then a slip. Right, and I slip, I'm still kind of leaning forward this way. I'm not, I'm not jabbing, leaning to the side here. I'm jabbing and I'm pointing this back shoulder. Almost as if I'm gonna throw a punch as well. And commit to a punch and he's, and he's on my body like the same exact posture my guard is up here i'm just slipping pointing that right shoulder forward instead of having my body come forward with the punch you know what i mean so it's the same posture i'm just here my hands are up this way i just jab him boom he's going to try to score back he's throwing a big shot with his right hand i'm going to slip to the outside okay so we'll go uh we'll go actually i want to want to slip off the right hand we slipped off that hook last time, so we'll go um, we'll go jab cross, and the other one will be jab uppercut. So we'll go jab cross and then slip. Okay, jab cross. Um, again, we're not really slipping to the side. One, two. I like stepping back with this back leg just slightly, and that pulls my head out of the way just enough. So one, two, step. As I step with that back leg, kind of sits like a spring. I'm kind of dropping my weight down that stance, okay? Now from here, I can come back up and fire with whatever I want. I can sit for an uppercut, or I can switch back over to my left side again and then come back up with my left hand, right? Or I can slip, roll underneath, and I can use that roll almost as like a Tyson hook as I lunge forward off that. Uh, but again, your legs, think of them like springs. Once you decide to engage, you guys are in the pocket exchanging, like – you're engaged during the fist fight. You know what I mean? So you want your your legs to be underneath you. Have them be like springs, right? Supporting you. You don't want your legs back here, your upper body falling over like this. So the legs are almost like shocks. Think how, think how strong those springs are in the back of the cars, you know? Support all that weight. It's exactly what it's the same, same kind of concept for that to uh, produce that shock that comes up. So we'll go jab cross, slip to that side, and then we'll go cross, hook, knee. So that'd be that first one. Jab, cross, slip, cross, hook, knee. We'll go, all right, we'll go jab, cross, slip, uppercut. Yeah, so we'll fire two punches, two different shots in the same combo. So jab, cross, step to the side, and then we'll go uppercut. Whop. Hook, whop. and then slip, uppercut, cross. Okay, we'll do that. So we'll get you guys moving in both directions, firing uh, all six punches. So again, one, two, step, uppercut hook, slip, uppercut cross. And that's basically all six different shots. You're throwing both straight shots, both uppercuts, and your left hook. So again, you go left jab, right cross, step off to that side, and then uppercut, hook, slip, and then there's that lead uppercut cross. Every time you're slipping, you're just taking help at center line. So if you guys can see this line that's right here, that's the line that's uh, kind of simulating the guy that's firing the shot. I'm trying to punch in the street line on my chin. That's right above this line. I'm just trying to take my head barely off that line when I see him committing. All right. So again, jab, cross, step, uppercut, hook, slip, lead, uppercut, cross. Again, one, two, slip, slip.
That's a good MMA pace. I think uh, boxing guys fire higher numbers. They fire more uh, higher, vol higher volume of punches in their combinations. You know, it's a different, it's a different science, different rules with the boxing. They can rattle off six shots, kind of unanswered, slapping the guy's forearm, his glove. The guy's kind of bobbing and weaving, moving, leaning back. MMA, you don't see that too much. You don't see uh, guys landing six unanswered shots. The guy might hit the, the first two shots, miss in the last two, clip with the third, miss, miss, or hit a shoulder. So I like this drill because it's forcing you to move after your two shots. Fire, fire, he's gonna fire back, slip. I'm gonna respond, he's gonna fire back and slip. I'm gonna fire and finish. You know what I mean? So it's forcing you guys to move. I just suppose just standing on the line and wah, 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 training shots. Uh, I try to hold mitt work like that, like the, the fight simulated mitt, mitt work, try to have the same um, rhythm as like the fight is. You know, a lot of guys come in here and rattle off on, the, on these hand pads, you know, eight, 12, 15 punch combinations. Uh, but then they're never gonna fight like that in the ring. You know what I mean? Uh, and so I think it's more beneficial, more efficient to train exactly how like you're gonna perform. And so they hit the pads, commit to them a little bit more, sitting through the punches instead of trying to rush through this power for speed or to make a pop loud or look fast to like, you know, the, the, your teammates or members and stuff. So I think it's better to sit down and crack those pads hard. And that's what builds that punching power. You know, it builds that, that spring in your hips, that force in your, in your forearm, your elbow, and just hitting the pads hard. So I think um, power kind of trumps speed in that sense. Unless you're already elite level and you know how to control your power and you're going for speed specifically. But then we're, we got to kind of train speed specifically. You know, I tell the guys, if you want to be a fast twitch athlete, you want to be faster, you got to train fast. So that means we tone down the power and, whoop, and we increase the speed. You know, Monday's a good day for that. We'll try to with a little gloves, just need more speed, touch fast, more flow movement, you know. And uh, the more weight that's increased, then uh, that's uh, – that's more force, more of the musculatory and skeletal system that you're using instead of the nervous system, just kind of moving, testing the eyes. You know what I mean? So, but these combinations that mix up both the nervous system, the responding, the eyes, I think is uh, pretty efficient, especially for the newer sport of MMA, right? I mean, it's pretty new can, can compared next to boxing and kickboxing, Muay Thai. You know what I mean? So the punching, the pace of the punch is a little bit different. And again, maybe 20 times with the weights. Same combo again. So jab, cross, step off, right? Up the hook, slip, up cross. And again, I'm pulling my head off the center line and then coming back. Right? When I fire that uppercut, I'm slipping off that center line and going forward, but my head stays off. I don't slip and then bring my head back in that lane. It's right, just a matter of, so it's just a, again, it's, it's, it seems like I'm like splitting hairs, but we're in like, fighting is a game of inches, you know what I mean? So whether your head is here on this line, in this lane, or right outside, it's huge. You know what I mean? So one, two, slip. And again, be able to hit a heavy back that's in front of you that's not moving allows your body to kind of move and take your head off that center line and then punch and have your head crisscross back through that center line and then come through again and then slip across again and stay to the outside. You know what I mean? So that, that drill we went over with the duck, with the athletic tape, we had the rectangle and that tape, that line down the middle splitting the rectangle, that's like pretty important. That's a pretty quality piece of equipment. And what is it, freaking five lines of tape, that light tape? You know what I mean? But that'll allow you to kind of stand in front of this rectangle and see what that line is. And it's here, here, here. <laughs> but man, if you guys are doing this a couple days a week, three days a week, you guys all should be way better with the movement. Right? We don't have to move our feet. We can just slip here, slip here, slip here. And there's those rolls as well. Right? I can start moving forward and back as I slip. Now we're adding a little bit of movement. Roll as you guys slip, as you step, or you can just slip as you step. I prefer to slip 
Right now we're just kind of moving forward and back. But again, you guys should be getting reps and reps and reps of this at home, in your garage, in front of your mirror or whatever. And just you know, when we get on the bad work, we can start getting in these reps, building punching power, and then everyone will look a lot better once you start sparring and open again. Especially if you guys have that movement. You should be able to do rounds just having guys throw on you when you have your guard up and you're just kind of blocking shots. You know? so here we go, another drill for the legs. Now, uh, so we're going to step in the middle, drive your foot 12, your toes 12, heel 6. Okay, you want to come opposite hand down, just touch. You can either touch the Bosu ball or go past and touch the ground, and then back up, and then other, other, other hand down. And as you go down these, the back leg is extending backwards as your counterweight, right? Back up. And again, if you guys haven't gone out there and read that book, Born to Run, so, uh, I highly suggest it. You'll think a lot differently about how you train barefoot, especially when you're doing barefoot sports like mixed martial arts and jiu-jitsu. So right now my ankle, my toes, my knee, everything's kind of working to stabilize. You see my toes are kind of gripping the, the base of the BOSU bar, the flat bar, just kind of has something to grab onto, right? My ankle and my Achilles are kind of stabilized as well. And now we're moving on it. So that back leg comes out as your counterweight. I mean, you can balance on this thing and do these drills, and it's going to help your footwork out a lot when you start moving and sparring. Especially if you hit a rock and you get stumbled back, the weight's going to be underneath you and be able to keep it up and where it's about to be able to move and recover. So all this stuff, there's a method of the madness and it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit different. So man, at least do like one day a week, if not two days a week, doing all this kind of stuff, just uh, stabilizers, you know, core. Um, and depending on whether you do more striking, um, I would say that striking is for sure less weight. Training on the shoulder and chest. I can't speak for grappling. I think weightlifting helps a little bit more for grappling. Um, but it's working like heavy, heavy bench press and heavy shoulders. Uh, a lot of high level boxers, high level kickboxers, they don't do too much overhead. The heavy weights might, you know, um, but as far as like intelligent, high level boxers, kickboxers, the, the punching is about, it's about uh, speed of sport, right? And, Kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai, it's, uh, it's all fast sports. So you want to train your body, train your shoulders to be fast, to throw your punch fast, to pull your hand back to your guard, right? So we're not just throwing lazy punches. We're used to doing, you know, 50 pound, 100 pound shoulder presses. What is that telling our body to do? You just throw one power punch and we're down. That means you're training the body to do this kind of motion as opposed to like fast twitch, you know what I mean? Like that you're going to need for a long period of time. Um, so again, all this stuff is just stuff you guys can do at home uh, with uh, you know very simple you know pieces of equipment. So let's other one we call uh, the Russian twist. So go side to side, just kind of keep your, your feet up. If you guys have like a pole or a tree or something you guys want to grab, you can do that. And if you have a partner, you can kind of throw you the ball. You catch the ball and go side to side. First, you keep the legs up. Just go back and forth here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that'll be the end of that second round, guys. So. You want to grab some water or record that or write that down. Um, and again, you just kind of extend uh, each exercise or whatever. Yeah.
I'll grab a sip of ice tea, we'll be back, we'll do the third round. Now we can even mix up the exercise a little bit with the weights. So we'll go uh, we'll start off with the palms down. I'll go out this way, kind of do them in reverse. Okay. Getting them palms in. Fingers up and down, start off shoulder, shoulder height, up and down. And we'll palms out. It's like that old Sylvester Stallone movie. Cobra, those, those guys with the axes. <laughs> I think it's in the 80s or 90s, but it's an old school movie. And then palms down, uh, thumbs down, hop your palm out. And then bend over, all flies. And again, you guys should be pyramiding down uh, if you have the weights to do so. You know, kind of, uh, I say anything more than 15 pounds is too much weight. So, like I personally will do 12, pyramid down to 10, and then go to 8, and do the 5s. As fight camp gets closer, you start cutting weight, then I, I, I drop that down. I, I start off the 8s, and then go to 5s, and go to the 3s. And then the two weeks, three weeks of, of uh, of uh, fight camp, especially the last two weeks, we were cutting weight a little fatigue. I'll do just the, the five pounds and the three pounds and teeter down. You know, a, lot, a lot of the body will work with blood, whatever energy and uh, calories it has to, to burn. And the last one, just kind of punching straight up. And switch your stance. All right, guys, so we'll call this a one slip, two slip drill. So we're going to go, uh, again, it's going to be having us move in both directions. So we're going to go jab. Well, the guy's going to fire back and just slip to the outside. You hear him going hook, cross. I'm going to slip the other side and come back, uh, cross hook. So one slip, two slip. There's a one slip, hook, cross, slip, cross hook. That's like a good beginning uh Beginner's level combination gets you kind of moving your head and firing back. So like jab, I committed to the jab. I think as you have, don't like get back. I don't think I have to get back and move my head out of the way. I don't think I have to jab and get all smooth and kind of get totally out of the, out of the way. I'm, uh, I'm just moving my head. Jab, boom, and then sit. I sit your weight down in your legs. I'm kind of gathering my weight, gathering my energy here. And spring back up, boom, with that hook. And then cross. And then slip again, other side, and I come back with a cross hook. So again, jab, slip, hook, cross, slip, cross, hook. 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 I can even change those punches up a little bit. I can go jab, slip, lead uppercut, cross, and then slip, uppercut, hook, right? So instead of doing the hooks, I 
jab, slip, uppercut cross, slip, uppercut hook. And then we'll go other side as well. So that's a one slip. So when I run on the pass, you guys know it's a one, it's a jab. I believe you constantly slip, you just, uh, automatically slip to the outside off that jab. So the other one's a two slip. So we're gonna go cross, slip here. So two slip, and then cross hook, slip, hook, cross. So now instead of starting off with a jab hand, we're starting off with that cross hand, that big power shot, boom. Is gonna get a good reaction right in, slip, and come back again. Cross hook, another reaction, slip, and finish the cross. So again, this one's two slip. Cross, slip, cross hook, slip, hook, cross. And again, you can uh, change the punches up on this one as well. We can go jab, or we'll go, uh, we'll start off cross, uh, slip. The cross is a good one to get a guy to answer back. It's a long, almost like javelin, right in his face. So here, boom, slip. He can miss a big shot, and you can pick him up the uppercut even. And then hook, and slip the other side, and then uppercut cross. So cross, slip, up hook, slip. Up cross. And the other side again, same thing. Jab, slip, up cross, slip, up hook. Good job. We'll do the last set of no weights. So all these combinations are super simple. They all have you throwing a, a mixture of all your different punches and they're taking the head off the left side and the right side. So then that one slip is a jab, slip that lead side, come back to a cross, slip, cross hook. Again, one slip, two slip. One slip, one slip, hook cross. We're gonna mix those punches up now, so. Uh, other side as well, so cross slip. So two, slip, cross hook, slip, hook, cross. One more. Keep the job, we'll finish up. Close to. And you guys can find your knees on this even too. Similar to the lunges we did. Um, kind of just getting on the ball and firing your knee from this stance. So instead of coming down, bring the leg back, bring your posture up. Other 
side. I'll throw my knee up and kind of hit with this lead hand, but I'll still keep this hand up. I don't want to get used to kind of dropping both my hands on my knee, so I try to have one hand up, just kind of touch my knee, but still keep my this guard hand up. Nice, again, 10 and 10 of those, or 15 to 15. Hope you guys want to mix those ones and the lunges, you guys. We can do like a more complicated one. So we'll go down, touch, and back up for the knee. Two more. Touch. Pause. Yeah. Last one. Touch. Rain. Yeah. All right, guys. And then, uh, you guys have a wall. You can fill this one again. So you can go down and take a beat. Um, that bottom hand that kind of supports the weight of the ball. Unless I get to one of those. Just go over this way. Um, it's better if you do a concrete wall, brick wall, so the ball can bounce off. These aren't the best for throwing again, but again, you're just using all your, your core to turn this way. You can turn my shoulder, turn my hip. The same mechanics I do when I punch. Same kind of floor, same kind of thing. So you're getting your body to a long beat, commit to this motion here. Stop moving your feet. Okay. On the other side, same thing. So the knee that's close to the wall, that knee's up. Right? You're kind of going to over the top this way. It's like your backhand hook. You do this hook. You can do that with a partner. Two guys can go back and forth. Or a brick wall or a bounce wall. But um, yeah, that's good for the day, guys. Thank you guys for joining us. Again, it's all simple stuff. You guys can work at home. Um, seriously, it's just three pound dumbbells, a five pound, a medicine ball, a bosu ball, and a jump rope, and a heavy bag. And if you don't have a heavy bag, you're going to tie some, you're going to get some cardboard and freaking saran wrap that shit to the tree. You know, just get that thing with your gloves. You know, make a little bit of fishing or then you guys want to train out there out at home, you guys will find a way. So again, these are all just little tools and tips for you guys to give you guys something to do. So, you know, you hit the ground running once they, once they lift this band and you get in here and start working again. But thank you, guys, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you on um, Tuesday for the next Live at Five. Close.